Okay, the frame is all painted now. What I did was take a inch and a quarter uh, by one reducing T, and that's what is going to uh, be the bottom catch for my steering. And here's the steering, which is a one inch pipe. What I did is I cut the uh, actual steering knuckle off of the bike, ground down uh, all the welds as much as I could, um, heated the bottom uh, down tube, and then uh, hammered in a one inch pipe so it's a nice tight snug fit. And then what I did is I took the top of my um, inch and three eighths fencing top rail and I cut that off and that's going to sleeve inside of the T once I paint it up. Uh, it'll fit inside of here and my uh, one inch tube will slide inside and it'll give me a nice uh, put a little bit of grease in there and it'll give me a nice uh, bearing uh, for my steering. Okay, so what I'm doing is uh, cutting out the floor. Marked that out on a piece of 3 8 uh, green grade ply. And then I also have the steering in now. This is the handlebar off the bicycle, the uh, steering tube that I had welded up. Um, took the forks off of ground and see where I have the collar from the 3 8 into 3 8 um, chain link fence top rail into my inch and a quarter to one inch T. I got some grease in there, turns nice and smooth. Put my caps back on, glue those in place, pull the nuts out so I can put the bolts in and I'll glue those in after I get everything bolted up. I'm going to cut this out and uh, screw it in. Okay, so now i got the floor installed. I put the cross rail back in. I also have installed the plexiglass for the windshield. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to make the front gears. And so this is the crank off of one of the bicycles. And I am going to take a 5 inch, five eighths inch drill bit and I'm going to drill out that center there. Now I'm leaving the handle on there so I have something to hold on to, but I just use a regular old bench top drill press, 5 eighths inch, got my lubricant, and uh, then eventually what I'll do is I will cut off, take a cut off, and cut off the arm here. Um, so this is what's going to give me my front sprockets, and uh, so we'll go from there. Okay, so we have one installed, we're going to make the other one, and what I did. I took a measurement from outside to inside to get my centers and then outside to outside to get my entire length. Then I came over and I measured out and cut out my piece of two inch flat stock. In this particular case it was 30 and a half inches uh, wide all the way across. And now what I did is I made one inch in and in the center and then I used a nail punch to get a starter hole and I'll go over and drill those out. Okay, now that I have my two holes drilled, I've marked the center and now I'm going to mark so that I am about a half an inch up from here, uh, from one edge. I'm going to drill another 3 8 hole and I'm going to take my uh, saw and I'm going to cut that out so I wind up with a groove, which I will show you what that looks like on this side. Here we have it right here. Now the reason why I'm doing that is so that if I ever need to replace the tire uh, or do work on the rear wheels, I can get it out easily. So the wheels will actually slip up into uh, here and allow me to take the rims out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt together my end caps here. And to do that, I have my end caps. I've got a couple uh, inch and a half by three eighths washers and lockers. Real simple. Washer. Flip it in. And then I'll just put on the uh, lock washer there. Tighten it down and I do the same thing on the other side. And I want to make sure that I'm centered. 
and uh, once I do that I can slip fit this back in. I'm not going to glue this in yet. I want to make sure all of my stuff is lined up first. Plus what I need to make next is the interior rail here that's going to help capture the other side and that's got to be parallel to this one here. So it's going to, you know, and we have this little offset here which allows the nut to sit on the inside. So we're going to have a little bend, come back and it's going to through bolt into the frame here. But the, the distance between those two has got to be consistent and it's about five and a half inches all the way up. So we got to plan out that bend really carefully. Uh, and then we'll bolt this on, but these are still loose uh, until we get everything done. Uh, we got to get the brake lines uh, situated and uh, attached. So if we need to pull this out and drill any more holes, we can do that on the drill press without having to worry about uh, anything not being straight or, or uh, like that. So we don't glue this up until the very end. So we're basically we're test fitting all of this. Okay, so as you can see, I've got this all bolted up. And I will slip one side in and the other side in. I want to make sure this is down. And then I will take a mallet and knock this into place. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to measure out. I'm going to make a couple bends in here. And again, my distance between there and here has got to stay consistent all the way down. Okay, so I have made a couple bends in my piece of two inch stock. That's going to fit snug up there. I'll drill a hole down uh, there to through bolt it. And then what I did next is I marked my center of this so that I can drill my 3 8 hole to bolt that in place. And then in addition, I marked my end cut here. And so I'm going to make all these cuts, drill these couple holes, bolt this in place. And then what I'm going to do is use a framing square to draw a <coughs> uh, center line hole for the other side of my drive wheel. And then I'm going to reverse and repeat this on the other side. And then we can install the rear Okay, I now have my holes drilled. I have my cap bolted in and installed. Now what I need to do is locate the position of that hole. As well as locate the position of this hole on this piece of stock. So one thing that's really critical is that you need to make sure that you are level. And the, the main reason for this is that if you're not level, uh, your wheels are going to sit crooked. So I'm going to use a level here and make sure that once I hit that bubble, that's where my center line is going to be. So then the other important thing is using a T-square, I'm going to line up my mark from my previous hole. And that will tell me exactly on center, parallel to where my other hole needs to go. And then I can remove this piece uh, and drill that out. That's again why we have not glued uh, any of this stuff in or screwed it. You can also screw these caps in uh, if you ever want to remove them, which is another way to go. Uh, I haven't yet decided which way I want to go. I may actually uh, screw them in place uh, just in case I ever want to make some changes later. Okay, so now we got the first wheel in. You can see we bolted that in. Made sure everything was level. Slipped our wheel up. We, we raised up on, on a bucket and a couple 2 by 4s so we could slide the wheel in place. And now we'll reverse and repeat and do the other side. Now the key thing to remember here is since you're going to be pulling off uh, wheels from two different bikes, you want to make sure that your rear sprocket set is what actually matches your uh, derailleur that you're going to use on your handlebars. Uh, in our particular case, the second wheel has seven sprockets on the back. This one has six, which matches our gear selector that's up on the handle. Okay, we now have the second wheel on. And the first wheel, now what I also did is I added the derailleur, Let's come underneath to show you here, uh, bolted that on to the outside 
um, just to kind of get it in place, uh, make some final adjustments uh, once we get everything all set up. In addition to that, I temporarily cable tied off the derailleur um, just to make sure I got plenty of movement in my thing here so that I don't have to, I got to make sure I don't have to lengthen that cable at all to make it work.